What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Advice back again with part 3 of the 3 part Dragapult Heatran Tournament Team Showcase. In this episode we got 2 great battles against 2 really strong opponents. I've been providing my analysis on the decisions I made and why I made those plays and we'll continue that trend. So our first opponent, Jack aka Jarshall, running standard Lily Cole Trick Room. So Heatran Grimmsnarl is just a strong lead into all the modes of this team. Politoid's great for dealing with the Staccatica and the Torical, and then I like Zapdos to deal with the Luligant. I got Safety Goggles if they're trying to spam Sleep Powders, and I can get off Strong Hurricanes in the rain, and I outspeed Luligant if the rain is up, so. Let's see which mode they go with. There's three standard modes, or leads rather, that this team can use. It can use the Luligant Torical lead, or if you have Fake Out spam, they might lead Ndidi Lilligant and then swap in Torkoal. And then uh, Hatterene Ndidi is the most common lead you see. So against my team without Fake Out, they could opt to go for Sleep Powder Spam, but Sleep Powder is something you don't really want to rely on because if you miss, a lot of the times you just lose immediately. So Hatterene Ndidi is the safest lead for this team, and that's what they lead, Hatterene Ndidi. So. Heatran Grimmsnarl is great against Hatterene and Didi because Expanding Force is what Hatterene wants to click, but it doesn't do any damage into Grimmsnarl because of the Dark type. So I force them to hit Dazzling Gleam if they want to get rid of Grimmsnarl, and Dazzling Gleam is 4x resisted by Heatran. So what I'm going to do turn 1 is I'm going to let them get Trick Room up. You know, I don't have an effective way on this team to stop the Trick Room, so I just get the substitute up and play into it, and we'll throw a Light Screen up just to cut their damage down. And, uh, you know, we'll try to stall out their Trick Room and then put on an offensive onslaught to finish the game, so. Light Screen goes up. They go for the Follow Me. I get off a Substitute. And so behind Light Screen, Hatterene will not break through Heatran without a Critical Hit Expanding Force. So they got four turns of Trick Room that we need to get through. If they want to start doing damage, they need to swap Ndidi out. So I'm just going to Flamethrower into Hatterene and Spirit Break it. And if they do redirect with Follow Me, they're still not getting off very much damage. So I like this position we're in. They do swap out Ndidi and bring in Landorus. All right. So we can deal with that next turn. They go for the Dazzling Gleam to get rid of Grimmsnarl. doesn't do very much damage behind the light screen and it's going to do even less after this spirit break now we're going to go for the flamethrower solid contact doesn't quite KO but Hatterene's low enough that any attack will kill it um, now I'm thinking about protecting here to stall out another turn of trick room but if they double into the grim snarl then I wasted a turn for nothing. So I'm going to put the ball in their court and make them make the predictions. And I'm just going to go for a flamethrower into Landorus. With the spirit break and light screen, I'm not even sure that Hatterene can break my sub. So Yeah, I don't mind losing Heatran. I think I'm just going to go for that flamethrower into Landorus. And Grimmsnarl is slower, so I can spirit break it too and start knocking down the special attack of his Landorus as well. Make it easier for Politoid to come in and clean up. Yeah, we take that Dazzling Gleam really well. The sub doesn't break. Spirit Break into Landorus for solid chip and a drop on the special attack. They do go for the Sludge Bomb to KO Grimmsnarl, but that means my sub is still intact and I'm getting off a big Flamethrower before I have to bring in Politoid and the Rain. Alright, so we get great damage into Landorus. Now I can bring out Politoid. Get this rain up. Landorus is 95 speed at its lowest. My Politoid is 92, so we will be outspeeding this Landorus under Trick Room. I believe there's two turns of Trick Room left. Yep. Now, Flamethrower will KO either one of these, even through the rain, but I'm going to go for Earth Power just in case they decide to swap that Ndidi back in and protect Landorus. Okay, they don't swap. They go for the expanding force. Yeah, behind light screen in that minus one, it does nothing to Politoid, and it doesn't even break the sub. 
We've taken three hits with our sub and nothing's gotten through it. And we double connect with Muddy Water for the double KO. Yeah, so this bulky Heatran behind sub put in major work in getting rid of their trick room. They do still have one turn, but uh, yeah, they, I mean, we still have three of our Pokemon at close to full health. Okay, Staccatica is their final reveal. They bring in Ndidi. So both of their Pokemon are at full health, but we're pretty healthy and we have Zapdos in the back as well. I'm going to go for Muddy Water here. I could I could uh, double protect, stall at this last turn of Trick Room, but I don't think Staccatica has anything that will Oko Politoid from this range, and I want to get off as much damage as I can on the last turn of Trick Room. They go for the Stone Edge. Ooh, it does come awfully close to KOing. We get our Citrus Berry, and that means they don't break the sub. Muddy Water double connects again. Politoid the clutch. Yeah, it doesn't quite pick up Staccatica, but we do get the accuracy drop, so that'll make Stack Attack a really unreliable in the end game. Earth Power. Hard to tell if another one will pick up. Now, being that our substitute is still up, I believe I have guaranteed win here. I'm going to go for the Earth Power into Staccatica, and I'll just Scald in Didi. I don't want to risk missing here. And, uh, you know, if they're trying to set up Trick Room, that means that they won't be breaking Heatran's substitute, so I should have a free Earth Power the next turn, even if they get up Trick Room. They go for the Follow Me. Earth Power does pick up the KO, so we'll redirect the Scald into Stack, and that is GG. You can see how effective the substitute in that light screen was against stalling out the Trick Room. I mean, they were never able to break the sub on Heatran and made it really safe to win this game. So GG to Jack. Okay, okay, we draw Sableye VGC. Well-renowned VGC player and Twitch streamer. He's got about as standard of a team as you will find. Rillaboom, Urshifu, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Spectre, and Landorus. All huge threats. But we do have the tools to deal with it. Now looking at his team, I like Zapdos. It does really well into everything he's got. But if he leads Rillaboom or Incineroar with Urshifu, he can set up a fake out pin turn one and I'm on my back foot. So I don't know if I want to lead Zapdos. Because if I do, he knows it's a huge threat to everything on his team. He's going to want to get rid of it right away. So, Dragapult does look like a good lead. Because it can't be faked out due to the ghost typing. And uh, I might bring Zapdos just to bait him into hitting into it. And I can switch into Amoongus. But you know what? Let's just get Amoongus out right away and try to set up a Dragon Dance, and we'll bring Zapdos in the back. No reason to put it at risk of taking damage. Um, Politoed to get the rain up and make Zapdos accurate in the endgame. And if I lead Amoongus, it kind of forces in the Feeny. And by forcing in Feeny, you know I have less of an offensive threat, and I can cycle in Zapdos and start putting him on the defensive, so... He does lead Urshifu Rillaboom, trying to set up that fake out pin, and it's Urshifu Dark, so. This is tough. He can fake out my, uh, Amoongus and go for a Sucker Punch. So I could go for a, uh, Dragon Dance to prevent the Sucker Punch, but then, you know, it's just too big of a 50-50 if he Wicked blows into me while I can't redirect. I lose Dragapult, and I don't want to lose Dragapult if he has Landorus or Spectre in the back, so I'm going to swap out into Zapdos. Seeing that it's Urshu Dark is actually nice because I can take care of it with Politoed. I'm going to go for the Sludge Bomb if he lets me get it off. We bring in Zapdos. They go for the Wicked Blow. 
into Amoongus. So they want to get rid of Amoongus. We take that pretty well. And they U-turn off Amoongus, so... Not enough to KO. We get Chip with Rocky Helmet into both Pokemon. And I'm guessing this is a Feeny switch in to prevent Spore. Yep, it is Tapu Feeny, so we're going to get a nice Sludge Bomb off into it and be able to judge how offensive versus bulky this Feeny is by the Sludge Bomb damage. Okay, does just under half, but that Feeny is not as bulky as some. It does have leftovers, but presuming it's more of an offensive Feeny by how much it took there, so. I have a Hurricane into Urshifu and swap into Politoid. A lot of Urshifus have been uh, not running max speed anymore and are going for more of the bulky variant, so it still is not going to be able to survive this Hurricane. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to guarantee that an Urshifu can survive Zapdos Hurricane with any EV spread. And it definitely doesn't have Focus Sash anymore, so... <clears throat> yeah, they go for Protect, so... And that kind of tells me that they are running the slow bulky Urshfu variant. I'm not 100% sure, but makes me feel a lot better about it that they didn't just go for the Wicked Blow, so. I'm gonna go for another Hurricane. They don't have any great switch-ins with the Rillaboom or the Feeny. Feeny's already, you know, taking good damage. Um, and I'm good to just get off of Muddy Water here. But I think I'll Icy Wind. If I do pick up this KO on Urshifu, I'd like to just slow down Landorus. And they go for a Sucker Punch. And a Sludge Bomb. So they're trying to get rid of Zapdos. They don't. We get off the Hurricane. <coughs> Urshifu goes down. Critical hit did not matter. Now the thing about this Icy Wind is instead of giving them two free switch-ins, I guarantee that my Zapdos is faster than Landorus. And that will give me some ability to go for uh, Roosts. And depending on how fast this Landorus is, Politoid might also outspeed. But I don't think I want to try to attack in front of Rillaboom. You know, usually it's pretty safe on turn one. They expect me to protect Politoid. And they want to get rid of Zapdos. Um... They could expect me to protect, though. I could get off a free Hurricane into Rillaboom. But if it's Assault Vest, it's not going to KO anyways, and there's no reason to risk Zapdos with Feeny still in the back. So I'm just going to detect. I don't feel the need to jeopardize my lead here in making a prediction, so I'm just going to double protect and scout out what they're going for. Okay, we get off the detect. Landers protects as well. So, either their Landorus is faster than Politoid still, or it's a speed tie, which I doubt. They go for the Grassy Glide into Zapdos. You know, that should pick up at how low health I am. They might try to go for it again, but I feel like they know that I'm going to switch Zapdos out into Amoongus. So I'm going to bank on that, and I'm going to go for the Hurricane into Rillaboom, and then just try to throw off a Muddy Water. Okay, they do pick up Politoid with a Grassy Glide, but we're going to get huge damage off with this Hurricane. And even if we lose Zapdos here, Dragapult can come in and clean up. And I believe that Amoongus can solo the uh, Feeny with how low it is. They go for the Earth Power into Zapdos, so maybe predicting the Amoongus switch in. Or a Roost. But yeah, I can just bring in Dragapult here and clean up with a uh, Dragon Darts. And uh, we'll just go for a Detect here to stop the Grassy Glide. Throw a Dragon Darts at him. They don't swap in Feeny, so this is nice. Grassy Glide into Zapdos. And Dragon Dart. Doesn't actually KO Landorus. But I don't believe that Earth Power will KO... Dragapult. They go for a sub, though. Yeah, it's definitely not going to do it. 
Maybe they were predicting me to predict predict the uh, Feeny swap in for Rillaboom and uh, protect. You know, if I go for Phantom Force there and they get off a uh, substitute, they're in better position. But yeah, I just didn't feel like anything but Dragon Darts was the call there. So now they're gonna want to protect Lander is here, just in case I'm going for another Dragon Darts, but. I'm going to cover for that with a Phantom Force. They don't have any counterplay, being that Lander is, is their last Pokemon. And I'll just Thunder the Feeny. Okay, there's the Protect. We go for Phantom Force. That means that they are going to be a Moon Blasting and a Dragapult. We missed Thunder, but that's alright. We'll get another shot at it. So, I'm going to go for a Roost here make it harder for Feeny to get to that 1v1 endgame versus Amoongus. No matter what happens here, I should have one healthy Pokemon to pair up with Amoongus. I'm assuming they want to take out Dragapult, though. We go for the Roost. We get a good health back. They go for a Moonblast into Dragapult. Boom, Dragapult's dropping, but it did its thing this game. So, we got two chances to hit Thunder into Feeny before we lose this game to a Calm Mind setup. You might have seen a few videos back. I missed five Thunders in a row against the Jellicent that made the end game extremely difficult. So, I'm going to say a quick genuine prayer that we hit one of these Thunders in the next two turns. And then we'll bring in Amoongus. Alright, here it is. I got faith we're going to hit this Thunder. And we'll throw a Sludge Bomb down. Boom. Thunder connects. Let's go. Feeny goes down. GG to Sableye. It's a really good win against a really tough team and a really tough opponent. We will take that. So We will wrap it up there. If you're still here and you enjoyed that, support your boy with a like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.